with the rollie, stole with the rollie on Who was our getaway car, Jag portfolio You hear me? Hey, I heard I had some sneak dishes Whoever feeling hot, that AR got a heat yeah, I agree All right Moving on to the co-main event of the evening. A lot of people saying this is a real main event. But it's uh, Cody Garbrandt defending the Belgian's former teammate, TJ Dillashaw. This fight was supposed to happen at UFC 213, I believe. And then Cody injured his back, had to have a bunch of, you know, had to have work on it, whatever. Now we're getting the fight. Um, Jeremiah, your, your thoughts on this fight? Uh, I'm picking Cody, man. I think he's just the new age mixed martial artist. He's artist. He's like the hybrid, the new age fighter. You know what I'm saying? Boxing, uh, wrestling, everything. But we can't, we got to take into effect. We can't say who looked the best against Cruz. We can't even talk about that. I just, for some reason, I think he's going to dominate him. He's going to be too fast on the feet. But then again, is it going to be a wrestling match too? And they're pretty even on the mat, I would say, but I still give the edge to Cody. Yeah, with, with uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it teaches it, it, a little slow last fight. Now that I think about it, the uh, who who did he fight? Sun Sao? yeah, Sun Sao, whatever. Yeah, but he used his wrestling in that fight, he, or no, I'm sorry, yeah. well, yeah, he did a little bit, he mixed it up. Yeah. He used a lot of wrestling against John Lineker. Uh, there you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jesse, who you, who you picking and why? Um, yeah, I gotta agree with Jeremiah. I think uh, Cody is the better guy, and I think the, the thing is that everybody draws comparison of TJ Dillashaw's style to Dominic Cruz. And there's a real, real reason for that, because if you put them side by side, they are using a lot of, uh, you know, foot movement. They're using a lot of angles. They're, they're using a lot of, of the same things. Now, TJ Dillashaw was supposedly younger, better, faster. And that style didn't really translate well and didn't help him against, uh, you know, Dominic Cruz. Um, and then you saw what Cody did against Dominic. He was able to really negate his wrestling, really, you know, able to counter the counter puncher. And really just beat him to the punch at every time. Even though uh, Dominic was still able to, you know, pop him here and there after getting uh, countered, he just wasn't, like, fast enough. And and I think that's the key here. I think uh, Cody is fast enough to really negate anything that TJ is going to bring to the table. Um, and, and I agree with Jeremiah, though, uh, in, in one aspect in that Co uh, Cody's uh, wrestling is going to be better. Although, you know professionally um uh, tj is the one that had the higher wrestling career i think cody is the one that's been able to merge it better really mix it up like uh, jeremiah said he's that new age fighter that really just mixes everything together so well that he can uh, transition from anything whatever you're going to throw at him and he's still going to pop you put hands on you and put you to sleep so um i i think this ends pretty quickly pretty violently i say in the second round uh cody tko damn all right um uh, counter the counter punch is why I'm picking Cody. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah, you know, Cruz is very, Cruz is very good at that. He's he's good at countering people and finding the angles to counter him through. TJ is similar in that way. I think Cody's just better at it. He's good. He knows where the counters are coming from. He counters those real well. So um, I'm taking him probably like late TKO, maybe fourth, fifth round. Um, and then uh, on the comments, uh, Joey Tremont is taking Cody by knockout in the fourth. Priya Rose says I want Cody to go straight to uh, basically win to fight DJ. But I think he would yeah. could be DJ, so I'd rather be. Oh, she wants to see T TJ or Dom against DJ, so it's kind of yeah. All right, I get that. All right, Fred, picking. Um, fuck, man, this is a really good fight. Um, and listen, I think a lot of people are gonna pick Cody, right? It, right. There's a lot of reasons to pick Cody in this fight. Uh, but since all y'all pick Cody and everybody's picking Cody, and I can't stand y'all, why not? We'll start a little <laughs> arguing point. <laughs> I'm going to list the reasons why I think that TJ Dillashaw could win this fight. Um, a couple things. A, and this probably has nothing to do with nothing, but I'm just going to say it because it makes me feel good. There's a little footage of old Cody floating around getting completely fucking starched out in his amateur career. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before, but he gets put to fucking sleep, Jack, by a no-namer. Now, I know that was early in his career and it don't count for nothing, but this wasn't like a TKO, get the ref off of him. This was a fucking you know, fucking hands stiffen up and shit. Like, I know this was about seven, eight years ago, early in his career, but seeing him get put to sleep like that could happen once, could happen twice. Now, the next point is, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of comparisons made to the Dominic Cruz fight, right? That's their one common opponent that they both have that happened recently. I think that's a bad thing to do because the difference is, and I think maybe the difference in this fight could end up being, um, uh, uh, Dwayne Ludwig. Hmm. 
So Dwayne Ludwig is TJ striking coach, and he's a beast. He has transformed TJ, who was a relatively shitty striker and just basically a fucking wrestle fucker, yeah. and made him low key one of the best strikers in this fucking sport. So like good overnight. Overnight, yeah, yeah basically you know, he's a fucking striker against Henning Burrell, you know. Yeah, kind of basically right. Uh, um, um, to the point to where TJ Flat followed Dwayne because he believed so much in his teachings. So there's something to be said for that. Um, I think that Cody probably punches it, it strikes harder and is probably a little quicker. But TJ's timing and accuracy may be a little better, and more importantly, I think he's more creative. And I think that Dwayne Ludwig will help him with that creativeness. And the difference with this fight is Dwayne used to coach Cody. Mm -hmm. Dwayne yeah. and TJ know a fuckload about Cody's game, where he's strong, where he's not. Way more than we dickheads know. You know what I'm saying? Now, vice versa, too. But TJ still has Dwayne on his side. So he's still got that kind of Greg Jackson-esque character. All due respect. Who does fucking Cody got? Uriah? Fucking Chris Holdsworth? Justin, uh, what's his last name? Yeah, Buckholz. No. Yeah, Buckholz. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a Muay Thai. He no, he's out too, right? No, he's Justin gone. Buckholz. He, he's still there. He's just a Muay Thai coach. Yeah, yeah he's just not the he, head coach. Uh, he's oh, not the head. Coach. I thought he left entirely. No, no, Jesse's right. He's not the head coach anymore. He's just Muay Thai only coach. Apparently, oh, they're doing this like five head coach type of thing now. Listen, I don't give a fuck. If right, he is right. the striking coach, he's no fucking Dwayne Ludwig. That's Agreed. my point. If it's Justin Bullcoats, how do you say his fucking last name? Versus, you know, <laughs> Dwayne Ludwig, um, you know, the game plan might be interesting. Listen, I, <laughs> this is a very close fight. There's no wrong answer to this. I would probably pick Cody ordinarily, but for the sake of argument, I'll pick TJ for the reasons I just listed. But either one of these dudes could sleep the other one. These little fuckers are accurate. They're strong. They're fast. They hit hard. Both of them. Um, so, you know, I picked TJ third round TKO, but if Cody slept, dude, it wouldn't surprise me either. You know, yeah, but I'm with you. The other thing we have to take into consideration too, is that, uh, what's his name? Uh, TJ is in the middle of a, of a gym move. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but, uh, mm -hmm. was down over in Denver and now he's trying to start up a place out here in California, uh, Southern California to be exact, that bastard. Has to be in my neck of the woods. But anyway. <laughs> I love know, that so, Southern yeah. California is your neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah. Probably Didn't Brad Pitt's neck of the woods, my dude. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think he's over in like some other country at this point, hiding from his ex-wife. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I think I think that's a big factor that we also have to look at is the fact that uh, a transition like that is, is definitely going to affect you, especially because he was training in Denver. At elevation, getting his cardio, you know, to be on point. Now he's at sea level, and we remember how sea level Kane was, uh, how big of a difference that was for, for Kane Velasquez, you know, a guy that relies heavily on his uh, conditioning. Um, that could definitely affect his, uh, his uh, performance here. So that's a good thing to look at. I, I talk a lot with uh, TJ's main sparring partner for this camp and previous camps, uh, Chepe Machine Gun Mariscal. He's a member of the Hawk MMA group, mm -hmm. and he said TJ's ready. He said he's ready. Expect something new in his fight. So I don't know what that means. Uh, you know, he's going to need it. He's going to need it, whatever new yeah. shit because, you know, it, it, his game is similar-ish to uh, to, to Cruz. So that'll be a uh, speed, speed difference, too. Cruz had uh -oh. TJ whiffing like a motherfucker, missing like yeah. hell. Okay, now real quick, uh, Priya's, uh, Priya's asking, so we kind of got to jump on this because this is actually is uh, kind of relevant, actually pretty relevant. Um Rose asking, uh, can I ask, what do people think about the Chris Holdsworth stuff? If you guys don't know, um, it's been, it was kind of, you know, rumored for a while, right? But then Uriah Faber and uh, Cody Garbrandt jumped on the Joe Rogan experience and specifically talked about how TJ Dillashaw is the one that ended Chris Holdsworth's career. Chris yeah. himself was on the aerial show the other day. And was he? I didn't see that. He was. He oh, you didn't see that? No, yeah, he confirmed he was going, Damn, Eddie, how you going to be the host and so uh, misinformed? I thought she was about to tell us that. Yeah, right. Chris Holdsworth right. called Ariel confirming the story. Yeah, said he I shot for a double leg. Uh, TJ yeah. sprawled. Chris was on all fours, and he needed him in the fucking head. Yeah, that's the one where you're writing. The, 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 where you're now, writing what he said hold on. Too. 
Hold on. Since I'm on this TJ Dillashaw kick, go ahead, go devil's ahead. advocate. What's to say that Chris Holdsworth isn't just catering to his buddies and fucking throwing old TJ under the train, right? I mean, Could is be. that possible? Before the TJ fallout with Team Alpha Male, though, they've always talked about him being a hothead That's and roughing true. people up in practice before the split, way before the split. But you know what? I know, I know Fred, Fred will know this because I know he's a fan of uh, our buddy Luke Thomas over there. Uh, Luke has always said, if he was such a bad guy and he had such a bad reputation, why didn't you kick him out of the gym? If he well, somebody, why well, didn't you kick him out of the gym? It, 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 I think and Uriah is loyal, though, man. Well, but hold on, though. Hold on. Though. In, in all honesty, why didn't you kick him out of the gym? Fuck, because he's a moneymaker. Because he's a he's a guy that'll probably be fighting for a day. That, yeah, let's not let's not play coy. Because I, I heard Luke say that, but I'm thinking you don't kick him out because he's a fucking winner. And if that dude becomes a champion, let's not act stupid. We all want him in the gym promoting the gym. You know, this is how this thing works. The more champions you got on Alpha Male, the more fucking gym memberships you sell. You know what I'm saying? The Machida era and whatnot. He- but he's also ending people's careers. I mean, you don't want a guy. It, it's kind of like if you had a. What's, okay, what's that? Settle, settle down. In the, he ended one guy's career, not people's. No, but I mean, he, they <laughs> keep saying that he was competitive in every aspect. You know, they were saying that he'd run to go get water, push people out of the way. You know, just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the water first, cocksuckers. I'm showering first, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what, though? I, I agree with I agree with you guys saying that like this is probably true though because if a guy is that competitive I mean I'm pretty competitive I don't know to that extent where I'm gonna shower first and you know eat first or whatever the hell but I mean you know if 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 you're that competitive and somebody gets an edge on you you're definitely gonna gonna be the crazy guy that needs somebody in the face or you know have those extra shots so I'm I'm thinking that maybe this is all true and maybe TJ is uh, kind of a dick man. I'm gonna rock the boat and say it was a fucking roid rage. Y'all seen his? Y'all seen, y'all seen his physique post you side of two though? I seen a comparison yeah. online the other day, man. Big fucking difference. Chris Holdsworth said yeah. that for what it's worth in the yeah, end. He, he flat said he accused him of taking steroids. Said so. he did. Yeah. Yeah, he flat said yeah. he did. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, John Smith says uh, one knee and that ends his career. Um, so now why not come out that day? That's a good question. Why not come yeah. out sooner, sooner and just wait till now for that to happen? Maybe because yeah. he's, he's, I mean, team guy, I guess. I don't know. It, it, the whole thing is just weird. The whole fucking story is weird. And by the way, I just can't watch Ariel's show. It, his voice annoys the fuck out of me. I'm just, I'm, I'm just being honest. I can't handle it. So I wait till I mean, all the interviews I, are out and you guys tell me what the fuck is up and we'll get together. I feel you, but so like, I couldn't cold. miss the Chris Holdsworth shit, man. That was such a big thing yeah, going through 217. And like, he, yeah. I had to hear his side of the story. Yeah. Listen, I didn't even know. Going by what he said, it's hard not to call DJ or I'm sorry, TJ a creep. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. still yeah, rocking with him. But. Unfortunately, I, the reason I don't listen to Ariel's shows because I don't have ten hours to dedicate to his show. That's right. the other thing. Uh, MMA okay. hours like eight, eight yes. hours. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, real quick before we move on to the next fight, Liam Hughes says uh, one back and cut you can affect you for life. Can't comment on that case, but it can happen. Good point. Uh, Priya yep. says I think it's true to a degree, but I think they're all pretty competitive. And that they um and that they call them out for pretty regular sucker punches and stuff. So they made the connection, but there's more to it. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's more to the story than than than, than we yeah. know. Now.